Hello and welcome. My name is John Hobby. Welcome to the Great Poker Chip Adventure. We're looking for the best set of stock poker chips you can find. And there's going to be multiple selections here at the end of this series. I'm not just going to be like, get everybody get this one. You'll probably get a few options. So today we are looking at the Tiki King, also known as the Tiki Club, also known as Tiki Ceramics. We're reviewing them as a stock set, but they can easily be customized. So buckle up, let's jump to the chase. Now this ha these have an interesting story to them. Interesting background, interesting design, interesting Chipco history, bought out by PGI, still available as a stock chip, all right? You can Google it, you can see what the stock set looks like and you can customize it to a certain extent, but we're gonna focus on the stock set right here that you're looking at. So the first thing, as interesting as the history is, you can look that up and read comments about it. But as far as the chip review goes, the first thing we always look at is quality control, but sometimes I like to answer questions, all right? Now, one of the common questions we get here, are they scratch resistant? This particular one written by Michelle C. All right, Michelle, let's, thank you for watching, and let's uh, do a little scratch test right here on camera. We're gonna pull out a little pocket knife here, and I hope I don't cut myself or my felt. That would be embarrassing, all right? Let's see if they're scratch resistant. Hmm. Well, there's some material that came off here and it looks like that's scratched, doesn't it? Maybe the edges will fare better. Again, I have to be very careful here not to scratch myself on camera. Oh, let's see. The chips, like me, are not scratch resistant. All right. They seem to scratch pretty easily there with a pocket knife. Okay. Anything else, you know, I'm not terribly worried about it. They're ceramics. They're really hard plastic. So not so much in the scratch resistant department. Uh, let's put that chip right up here. We may not be done with that chip just yet. <laughs> so quality control. These are sold as a 39 gram. Sorry, I always get this screwed up. 39 millimeter chip, 10 gram. I can never get these numbers straight in my head. I'll throw up my measurements here and you can see any variants that I found in this chipset that I've ordered. The weight, width, and thickness. Giving you a close up here of some of these uh, wonderful chips. And let's talk about flatness. Now with a lot of spit, <laughs> spinners are found commonly in lots of ceramics. For example, you've seen the Nile Club. I think I have some right here. And generally there are, they just spin sometimes because they're not really flat. The Tiki Club have a wonderful texture and a wonderful quality control where it's really hard and I haven't found any yet, but of course now that the camera's rolling, maybe I will. I haven't found any really bad spinners like with the Nile Club, all right? They all feel really good. And as far as flatness goes, we have a stack of 20 here. You can squeeze them and they don't, they don't rock. I'm not feeling any rock in this at all. There might be a little that I'm not picking up, but as far as I'm concerned, flatness is superb. Now the question is, what do I compare it to? I don't want to compare it to the low end ceramics, which are much, much less expensive. So, you know, you compare it to the Nile or sorry, the Nevada Jacks, and they're very compar comparable, but for ceramics in general, they're way above average, but compared to Nevada Jack, which has a really solid flatness record here with me, and hobby philic here it's average all right i'm tempted to give it above average but just to be fair we'll give it an average rating here so spinners flatness taken care of now the dimples are somewhere that i'm have not been happy with these chips they some of them not all of them but some of them really stick out and they bother me to a point where i've actually cut them off i don't know if that's one but you'll see little white specks sometimes where i've actually taken an exacto knife and just shaved off a really bad dimple. Now, for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, um, when they manufacture these ceramic chips, they seem to come on a tree or something like a plastic parts tree, like with a plastic model, and they separate them from the tree. And then you can see little dimples here where they separate them from the molding process. All right. And they're called dimples. They're colored. They don't peel. I haven't had any problems with them peeling. And sometimes if they're bad, and there's only a few that are like this, but on, in this set, where when you grab the stack of chips like this, 
you'll feel those dimples protruding and it kind of bugs me. I noticed stuff like that. Like these right here, I'm not detecting any problems. Um, if I find some really bad ones, I'll probably roll in multiple <laughs> pictures of them. So that is kind of an issue with these chips. I did not have that problem with the Nevada Jack set, all right, which is a comparable price to the Tiki's. So, so far, the dimples are below average. Now, let's, when we talk about consistency here uh, of inlays, in this case, it's not an inlay, it's actually printed on the chip. Like this is a great example right here, conveniently. If you look at that image, it's not centered on the chip. You can see there's hardly any purple here on this left edge, and there's tons of purple on this edge right here on the right. So that image is just not centered. All right, now that's pretty common. I mean, those tolerances there, I mean, it's not far off, far enough that you can notice. But that's pretty common in the world of ceramics. Here's a great example from Nevada Jack, all right? Not centered. It's just one of those things you're going to encounter when you purchase large amounts of ceramic chips. So that's very average edge marks. Now, the image is not lined up with the edge mark. Let's grab a few here and we'll compare. So you can see kind of on these two, but this one, you know, that edge mark is off to the left. You grab another one and the edge mark's nowhere near the top there. So they're not lined up at all. Do you expect that at this price level? A lot of people will say yes. Some people understand, you know, when you order a set of custom chips, you have to pay extra for that. So are people willing to pay extra for a stock set of ceramic chips? I personally would rather have a less expensive chip with the edge marks not lined up because the edge marks aren't really visible on the face. And they do a great job choosing some interesting edge marks here. So give that average or, you know, across the board. Other ceramics don't line up the edge marks, so I'm fine with that. They would have problems too. Now, the shoulders are very consistent, but they are polarized. So there's one edge that's round, and there's one edge that is slightly beveled, if that makes any sense at all. When you look at these really close and play with them for countless hours like I have, and this particular chip, the way I have it aligned, the top here is round, and if you look real close, you can see that bottom edge seems to be beveled right? Like they put this on a cookie sheet and it kind of spread out and then they shaved around here. To me, that's not a big issue, but it is noticeable. Again, remember these are poker chips. It's not jewelry. So I'm just showing you things so you're aware of them. I'm a consumer advocate. I like people to know what they're getting. To me, that's not a big deal. And that's very average across the board. You experience things like that with Nevada Jack. They have a very similar style here where one side is round and one side is beveled. I'm not sure if that's showing up right there. This bottom side is beveled and that top side is rounded. But that rounding of the edge does make a very nice shuffle. It, they're just, yeah, very, very nice. And speaking of shuffling, they also have a very smooth texture and it is very consistent across all denominations. Like you remember my Nile Club review, the texture on the Nile Clubs is not consistent across all the chips. Whereas these are, I'm not sure if the camera's gonna capture that texture, but it is a very smooth linen style texture, which is much more smooth than the Nevada Jack. The Nevada Jack has a very coarse, compared to the Tiki Kings, a very coarse texture on the surface there. That might be something to consider, but the Tiki's are very, very smooth. They have a wonderful, almost a velvety feel to them. Now, we discussed, you know, <laughs> all of the quality control. The Tiki Kings are slightly are below average when it comes to dimples, but everything else is very average. Very equal, rock solid set of ceramics. So overall quality control, we're gonna give it average. But let's come back to our little friend up here with the scratch on him. All right, before we talk about design, let's get to the next question here. The next question is, are they cut proof? which means we're, need to, we're gonna need to get a saw and see if we can cut through this chip. Let's go and do that right now. All right, we're back and as you saw, it cut through this like butter. Look at that cut. Actually, it was surprisingly easy to cut through that. You can see the scratches and the cut. So. 
It is not scratch resistant and it is not cut resistant or cut proof. So we'll continue on with this. We're gonna set this right up here. At a future point here, not too far away, let's talk about the design of the, Diki, of the Tiki Kings here. Now, obviously you can see pretty bright, vivid colors. Let's grab a few of these. And we actually have quite a bit to discuss. Now remember, these are customizable, but we're talking about the stock set here. So let's start with the 100 while we're, while we're here looking at them. If you look at this 100 carefully, you'll notice, and the people I play with have mentioned, it's not truly black. And so I was looking at this, sure enough, it's a slightly gray in the neighborhood of a navy blue. Not sure if my camera's gonna pick that up, but in most lighting, well, all the lighting I've looked at it, compared to like this Paulson right here, it's looked more like a navy blue than a true black here. Maybe the edge will give us a better look here. Can you see that? And I never really noticed that until you compare it to something, you know, like a Paulson, that's this really jet black. So something to consider with that, you'll notice that there is the dollar denomination on here. But remember, <laughs> the stock set. Uh, obviously you can customize these and you can take that dollar sign off if you want. An aspect of the design. Now another, what I consider a design fault, not a quality control issue, is these are designed with these diagonal stripes and the way ceramics are made, there is actually a cutoff point. You can see the dimple right here. There is actually a cutoff point where on some of these chips, you'll see the diagonal cut be right where the wrap ends. And you can actually see some fading right here. That's also, that also happens on the, here's a great example right here. See how this diagonal cut is just cut, it, there's a sharp cut right here where the wrap just kind of ends for the design image right here. That's one of the reasons why a lot of people don't put diagonal marks as edge marks to avoid stuff like that. So is, I kind of ding them that on that for design. And the other thing that a lot of people notice about the design, let's go back to lots of these chips here. Another interesting aspect about the design of these is they are awfully happy, right? Now, many people, including some of the people I play with, do not like happy poker. It's a serious thing, right? It's money, it's gambling. And they are very keen and like chips that look more serious. For example, Nevada Jack. I mean, you put a skull on there, that's a pretty serious looking thing, right? So they're okay with something like this. And again, I have other friends who think this is too busy, too complicated, and why even bother? Why don't you just stick with something classic, right? By the way, discontinued, these Paulsons. So those are all criticisms that my friends have leveled on the Tiki Kings, the Tiki Club, the Tiki Ceramics. I'm just gonna call them Tiki Ceramics from here on out because it's easier. There's so many different things that people call these chips. On the PGI website, they sell them as Tiki Ceramics, all right? Now, yeah, like I said, rich history, rich story. Go read about that somewhere somewhere else, not this video. So these are the PGI Tiki Clubs. Now, for me, this is my character. I'm smiling, happy. I like the, you know, it's okay to be a tourist on vacation playing poker. All right, most, and you know, the pros don't care. I mean, they like people like me because I, you know, just pay, pay out wizard, right? It's just like I'm the fish and they're the shark. So to me, I'm happy with a set like this. I would rather be happy than serious, just my style. So it come, a lot of the design comes down to just the subjective nature of the design. And a closer look real quick. I don't have them here, but you'll notice that all of them here, but you'll notice that there is a theme of suits here. Like here's the clubs, you can see the little three leaf clover up there. You can see the 1000 has a spade right here. You'll notice the diamond pattern in the background on the 500 here. And then we have get another spade. And so in this particular choice of denominations, 
there's that repeat of the spade theme and we missed the hearts theme. But if you look at the, go Google it and you'll see pictures with the heart theme on there. A very interesting way to incorporate the poker suits into this tiki Easter Island sort of themed, maybe not Easter Island, but either Polynesian or whatever it may be, tiki design here. It's just very, very interesting in my opinion and happy and I like the colors. Cartoony, that may not be your thing. All things to consider. And you can tell right away if you like it. If you're sitting here like, I'm not sure if I like those or not. Really, I mean, you look at, I, mean, I like these because they're, everybody I've shown these to, it's kind of love hate. They're like, wow, I love these. Or, oh my gosh, this is obnoxious and cartoony. It's like the Dodge Viper, right? Love hate. And to me, that's a bonus for design. I'd rather have things be love hate than kind of blah. Uh, one of the great examples of blah, I can't reach it. Oh, well, here, there's some right here. A great example of blah are the next gens. They're just there as poker chips. They're not, they don't call attention to themselves. There's nothing bright or happy or exciting about them, like even compared to Paulson's. Paulson's have that super bright <laughs> coloration right there, and then the next gens are just blah. I'm a chip, and I represent 100 units of whatever you're playing for, right? Play money in our case. So... The Tiki Club don't have that problem. So for design, very subjective here. Ding them a little bit for their imperfection in the, maybe maybe it is quality control. You guys can be the jury on that. But quality control and design of these diagonal stripes, not my favorite. But overall, the design, I really, really like. So it's a personal thing, and you can rate it for yourself. You've seen them now. You know what they look like. For me, the design is above average. And that brings us to our next question about these chips. Are they stab proof? Well, I can think of one way to find out. And the answer is a resounding yes, as long as it doesn't shatter. I bet you somebody out there who's watching this is strong enough and they have a knife thick enough or sharp enough that if they really hit this, it would just shatter. But it didn't go through. So it's 1-1 one, one so far. The Tiki Ceramics 1, Sharp Objects 2. All right. Well, again, we'll leave it over here. And we have one more trial for that particular chip. I'm having way too much fun making this video. I don't know if it's coming across, but I, lo <laughs> I love stuff like this. It's, it's ridiculous. All right, now we're talking about materials. Speaking of a little uh, interesting torture test here. I like it how it went right through his face right there. Who knows, maybe it's a she, right through, he or she, right through its face right there. It's a totem, right? Who knows its gender. We are talking about materials, which means I always have a little baggie of chips and they do this, do this with all of them. These have been worn by my friends. You know my friend, they always rub them, they always rub them together like this, right? And if you look closely here, I'm not, this is really hard to see. I may have to take a picture, but if you look real close in the light, you can notice a shiny edge right here where there's normally texture. Let's see if we can grab one that hasn't been worn. Okay, so on this edge, can you see that glare in the light? And then you look at this one and there is no glare in the light here on this edge. So can you see that the difference there? How this one has that shiny spot and this one doesn't? That shiny spot is caused by that wear, but you'll notice the color is still there. So it's still black. Well, you know, you've seen my comparison slightly, slightly off black leaning towards a navy blue, but the texture is worn very much like the Nevada Jacks. So again, they may put a clear coating on here to create this texture, but I like it that just by like wear like this, it doesn't wear immediately. Obviously you can see from this chip, it is, they are in fact white blanks and with enough time and with enough wear, you will eventually expose that white blank. But I, you know, I watched torturously as my friends just rubbed these together like hard, like they put them on the felt and they really ground them, right? So. I'm really happy with 
the materials that they use to make this. And as you can see from this, it is a hard plastic. They call them ceramics because they are a very hard plastic, but it's not a true ceramic in the sense of it turning like glass as you bake it, all right? So very interesting materials. The texture, when it wears off, and it will wear, doesn't you know expose that white blank right away, which is very good. It has a nice hearty feel to it. It's not like overly heavy, like some other chips I've reviewed. And the great thing about materials, and this is why I love these chips, PGI on their website says that their ceramics are 100% lead free. Yes, thank you. Finally, some transparency in materials. That's all we wanna know, is it lead free? I'm really happy that they did that. One of the reasons why we can do awesome tests like this, or, you know, maybe, I don't know, put a chip in a blender. Who would ever put poker chips in a blender? What kind of crazy person would do something like that? So we've seen, you know, the materials, you can see the white blank, lead free, above average. That transparency means worlds to me. Now, durability and wear, <laughs> we've kind of showed you that with materials. But that leads us to our final test. Will this survive? Well, there's one way to find out. That test is, let's see, we have, uh, we have this message right here. Can they be chopped by machete? I assume this individual named Dr. Juan, because Juan, isn't that a span? I don't know. Anyway. By this doctor, if it can be chopped by a machete, I assume he means machete. So we happen to have a machete here in the house. Let's go find out if this is machete proof. Ah, try that again. Okay, needless to say, that was a bad idea. If <laughs> uh, Do not try this at home because I'm what am I? You see, I've reached a point in a sentence where I kind of hit a dead end there. Uh, don't try this at home because it's a bad idea. How's that? <laughs> parts are everywhere. I spent the last 20 minutes of my life looking for parts of this one poker chip. This is the biggest piece I found. You can see the scratch right there. You can see the stab wound right there. And the other pieces I found you can see are just these itty bitty little things. Small enough that the camera won't even focus on them. And yeah, sorting through all of this, I found some interesting, I found a, a 45 casing. I'm like, sweet, I can reload. And then I'm like, no, it has a small pistol primer on it. Thanks, Blazer. I don't know what that has to do with poker chips. I'll edit that out. Note to self, edit that out. Yeah, right, I'll probably leave it in. So you can see all these sharp pieces here that went flying everywhere. Thank goodness I had eye protection on just exploded in every sort of direction. So needless to say, this is not machete proof. Thanks for that. So durability and wear, you can see they're very durable, not scratch resistant, not cut resistant. Uh, they're stab proof, but they're not stab resistant as in they it will be damaged with stab wounds. You can see right here. Nice stab wound right there. And as far as like the texture wearing off, the texture will wear off a little, but you maintain your color and flatness and everything. So overall, not really a major issue. I mean, as far as all the other ceramics, these are just as durable as any other ceramic out there. And in my opinion, more durable than the clay chips. Not quite as durable as some of the metal insert chips, ABS metal insert, pretty durable, however, it comes, they come with faults. So overall durability and wear compared to all the other ceramics, they're very average. Let's say that. Now, now we get to some competitive options. The competitive option for the Tiki Club, there are a couple of premium chips out there that didn't interest me. The only one that I can think of that seemed as interesting as the Tiki Club are the Nevada Jack set. Nevada Jack, Highly recommended. No dimple problems like the Tiki's had. Excellent design, a little more coarse, not as buttery smooth, velvety like the Tiki's. So there you go. Two great options right here. 
you can really can't go wrong with either one. Now we're talking about things that I don't really care for. But before we do, let me just kind of draw a conclusion here. Tiki Club, highly, highly, highly recommended. These are easily in my top five, maybe higher. We'll wait till we get to the end of the series here before I draw a final conclusion. But these are very high up on my list of chips that I really, really like. They're likable. They capture my personality. They have character. They're fun, clear denominations, easy to see what you're playing with, and they have a buttery smooth feel to them. And that, so highly recommended, highly, highly recommended. Now that brings us to shuffling and sound. All right, let's just throw all these up here. And we're going to have to move our destroyed sharp edges right here. Ever crawling around on your hands and knees in your shop thinking, what series of events has led me to this point in my life? It was one of those kind of moments. Like, why did I do that? What a great idea. Genius here. All right, shuffling, easy to do. These have nice rounded edges. And so the chips just are so smooth when, when you shuffle them. As far as any ceramic I've ever shuffled, these are by far the most smooth, the smoothest, right? Uh, my hands are freezing from crawling around on my shop floor and you know they're still just so easy to shuffle and buttery smooth. You wanna be careful if you're not super experienced shuffling, it's easy to leave the top ones hanging and they will slide off. Ceramics can be a little bit more slick than a clay chip, like particularly a Paulson. So shuffling, easy to do. Um, and if my hands weren't freezing, maybe I should do it anyway for entertainment value. It's, it, these are pretty easy to shuffle, a whole stack of 20. Ah, oh, my numb hands here. Let's see if we can even do that. All right, here goes, live in front of the camera. Whatever happens, happens. I can tell you I already messed that one up. Try one more time here. And if not, maybe I'll just roll in some footage of me with warmer hands trying to shuffle these. There we go. I got them. Ha! I'd like them apples. It probably wasn't perfect. But, you know, shuffling a full stack of 20, they're that smooth. The quality control is very reasonable on those edges. And I think I botched this one. Yeah, that was a terrible one. But at least they went together. So, shuffling, great for ceramic. Love them. Smooth, buttery feel. Now, well, let's use the 25s. We've kind of been ignoring them. We're using these for our sound test. And we're going to start out with competitive options. The one competitive option. They count ceramic. Any chip can sound different depending on how it falls. All right, and let's compare it to some other ceramics for the sake of argument. Nile Club, and we're looking for some scrolls. I think I have some kicking around here somewhere. Need to dig them out. Okay. And let's start low end here and work our way up. I need to reach here. For some dice chips here. And we also are looking for some metal insert chips. The next gens are roughly in that same price range. Oh, let's grab some Monte Carlos. These represent pretty well. And some poker knights. All right. Next gen pro, pro, whatever. Poker Knights. Monte Carlo Poker Club. All right, now let's move up the scale a little to some of these China clays.
Desert Palms, Milano's. Oh, well, let's see. Let's try some Top Hat and Cane and some Paulson Classics. And there you have it. The Tiki Club, world-class poker chip. Some of those things I nitpicked about really don't add up to anything that you can complain about. Little tiny dimples on the edges, not a huge deal. Could they improve that? Yeah, probably. The centering is not perfect, but at what expense are you, you know, willing to pay for perfectly centered chips? Same with the edge marks. I really like the edge marks, even though <laughs> the yellow theme runs across all of them and they are that diagonal, which can be, which can have those harsh cuts in them. So I love, love, love these chips. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, share, tell your friends, and just enjoy the wonderful game, which is poker. Be happy, people. Thanks for watching. My name is Hobby John.